Chris, this is Gross Models. Welcome to day six of 30 days lost in space. Uh, now last week, basically, they seem to do five days as a week, which obviously, <clears throat> then they get the weekend off. Um, last week, we were playing around with lights and switches. This week, we've got something different to play around with. We have this, which is a, a photoresistor, uh, which, as I remember from my previous knowledge of electronics, is basically a resistor similar to the resistor that we've used before but this one is variable uh, it, depending on the amount of light that lands on it, it depends on the voltage that it has and uh, so we're going to be using that single resistor three wires and the board uh, now i'll let alex do his introduction and tell us what we're going to be doing and then he starts off with some programming uh, i'm going to start off with the building because i feel that's the best way to do it but uh we'll let him carry on and See what he has to say. Well, hello. Welcome back. How was, how was your weekend at the bottom of the ocean? Mine was pretty good. I wasn't at the bottom of the ocean, but uh, I had a good time. Um, our incoming transmission we received from your ship is showing that, once again, your power levels are a little bit of an issue. Um, that being said, we have a little bit of a solution for you. Um, since it's been such a stressor this whole time, we have a new component we're going to show you guys today. I'm going to quickly show this into the camera over here. This is known, if I can get the focus, as a photoresistor. Now, it's not like a solar panel, but for story purposes, because we had somehow incorporate this into the story, we can't actually get the solar panels on your ship working without it being able to detect when there's going to be light on the solar panels. Um, and to do that, we have a thing called a photoresistor that will detect the light values and tell us if it's bright enough to get charge or if it's not bright enough to receive charge. Um, so this is going to be start of the new day, new week. And then this week, we're going to be trying to get your charging systems. Today, I'm going to be building over this side of the board instead of as I was before this side, because we're not dealing with the, the digital input and output. We're dealing with the analog ones, which are the little ones down here. Uh, so we have, as ever, to get the power. We're going to get that from that side as well. We'll get the ground from over here. There's two marked ground. Uh, and as he does in the video, we're going to use A0, the signal which is there. Uh, so on the board, we're using just the photoresistor, which is going to cross two pins. Being a resistor, it doesn't matter which way round it goes. There's no diode in it. It doesn't matter which legs which. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're taking the signal from that and supplying it with power. There. Uh, so that, in theory, I think should work, but it needs to be grounded as well. So we're going to take the ground all the way from down there and ground that with one of the resistors that we've been using before. I uh, don't know that it's strictly necessary to use a resistor. You might be able to ground it straight in, but it's always good to use a resistor to, just in case of problems. So uh, that's that. Uh, I've done the building bit. Now I'll get to the coding bit and we'll see how it works and programs in and then we'll be able to plug it in and get it actually i'll plug it in first because it will just be doing what it was doing last time which is nothing at all because i've unplugged all the lights and the switches and things uh so we'll get to programming that in a moment and see if it works so he's got some things programmed in there uh i'm going to delete all of what we had from day four because we don't need that anymore and start from the top. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to start a new because that's still got the uh, the loops and things set up in there so I can understand what's going on. Uh, right, we're going to start as he has with uh, calling something uh, sensor pin. Uh, and he's calling that A0. I assume the A is obviously important because it's the analogue. Uh, so that's that. Oh, no, it isn't. We need to put the semicolon after that. Uh, right, then, as he said about uh, serial begin, 
that seems to be uh, initialising the, I think it's more like a frequency, the board rate uh, of the input that we're going to be using. Uh, and then let's put that down there as well. We've got serial print dot print uh, ln. Uh, then he's got that saying hello. So let's try exactly what he does on there. Uh, so as far as I can tell, as he's explained already, um, we're telling it what pin we're using, although we're not using a pin at the moment. We're using the debugging type system that is built up here, the serial monitor, uh, which is set up as it is down here for 9600. So if I send this to the board, the board will, first of all, it's initialize the sensor pin, but that doesn't matter. Uh, then it will initially run the setup once and say serial begin is at 9600. That's where it's going to be outputting to. And it will just loop printing hello. So it should be exactly what we can see him doing in the background there. Uh, for mine, uh, the board is already plugged in. So let me upload that. I don't need to save that. That's gone in, that's working, it's doing things, it's received, and it's saying hello lots and lots and lots of times. So what I'm gonna do is delete that line and upload that. So it stops it saying hello, 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 hello all the time. But at least I know that that bit works. Uh, now, the next bit he's gonna explain is about uh, actually using that sensor pin to give us a different output, a different variable. So the next step um, we've put in, I've done the typing off screen because you don't need to see me type badly. Uh, but a new sensor value is zero. Uh, I'm assuming that that just means, uh, see there should be a space there as well. Or maybe there doesn't need to be. Uh, we're just setting it as a, a base value of zero to begin with. Uh, that's the same. Uh, we've added these bits here. Uh, the sensor value analog read sensor pin uh, is changing the value of sensor value from zero to what we're reading through the analog on the sensor pin, which is A0. So that makes sense to me. We're gonna get a number back from the sensor as to how bright it is in the room. Uh, then serial print line uh, is what we did before, but instead of printing hello, we're printing the sensor value that we've just worked out on there. Uh, then we put in a delay of half a second so it just doesn't flash through quicker than you can read. Uh, so we've got that sitting there, still printing hello, hello, hello. I shall upload that. The board flashes to say it's receiving. And instead of hello, 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 we get some numbers. Uh, hopefully you can still read those there. We're getting 130 something. It's varying a little bit as obviously light lands on it. So let me put that in the corner uh, while we've got this here. So you can see that there. Hopefully you can still see the numbers, although obviously they're not very big. Uh, if I cover that over, you'll see the numbers go down to they're actually in the sort of 20 30 range although you can see it going to one two digits or three digits uh, so the darker it gets the lower the number is obviously if it was pitch black it would be zero as far as i can tell uh, i don't know how high it goes if it was as bright as the inside of the sun but either way we're getting a number back and changing that I'll go back to showing you the full screen so you can see the numbers. Uh, so there, down to 20s and 30s, and up to 130. Uh, if I put a bright light on it, it would go higher. Let me grab a torch on my phone to do that, just like you did. There we go, that goes up to 600, 700, 800, depending on if I get the light just focused right in the right place. About there is about as high as I can get, 8, 850. Uh, so that works. Uh, next up, we're going to be changing things on the board as well. Right, I've put in the code. I've also put in the descriptors for it, which he hasn't done. He told us to do it and he hasn't, but I have. Uh, so I put this as naming stuff just because it is naming the different things. We've added the onboard LED at pin 13. Apparently there is a pin 13, but it's also the onboard LED apparently. So yeah. Um, so we've changed the pin mode onboard LED to be an output because it is an output because it's a light. We knew that already. 
Uh, that was the same as it was. Uh, so now we've got new bits down here with digital writing to the onboard LED, turning it on. Uh, with digital writing to the onboard LED, we're turning it off. Now in between there, we've got a delay for the sensor value. The sensor value is the analog reading from the sensor pin, which we've already told it is from A0. Uh, so we're sort of putting in extra layers of complication in, uh, and then we're turning it off for, again, the same value as that. And then we're still printing it on the screen because I like to see the printing thing. Uh, so I'm going to send that to it, hopefully. No errors or problems there. Yeah, that's gone through. Uh, right. So we've now got the numbers still coming through on there, as you can see, going low when I put a finger over it. Although it's coming through a lot slower there and quicker when it's a low number because to do with the delays. Uh, so let me show you what I've got on the screen here, on, on my bench here rather, not the screen. Uh, no change to the circuit. You can see the onboard LED, that one there, flashing a steady rate because it's fairly bright. If I make it darker, it flashes quicker and quicker. And if it goes almost completely black, it's flashing so quick that it almost looks steady. And again, if I put an extra light on it, uh, you'll see if I can find an extra light for it, there we go. Um, that will go to be a very long delay between it being on and off. Just like that. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this week, as far as I can tell. Um, I'll check through and make sure there's nothing else to add in, but assuming there isn't. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. I'll let him do his outro, and then I'll see you tomorrow for more. So, luckily today, we have been able to accomplish, hopefully getting the uh, photoresistor online so you can tell whether it's bright enough or dark enough for your solar panels to get charge in them. Um, but a better way to do this would be to have the indicator light tell us whether the battery is charged or not instead of whether it is charging or decharging, um, depending on the light level. Uh, or the length it's giving off, etc. Um, so tomorrow, we'll have some funny, not really funny, but uh, some interesting new tidbits into your code, expanding on the logic of uh, the code world using the same wiring diagram, and we'll get an indicator light to tell us if it's charged or not. Um, so you can look forward to that tomorrow. This has been Alex. Over now.